since we are speaking about the respiratory system, uh, some respiratory patients will also be connected to what we call as chest tube, uh, as you see it in the slide. And the chest tube is usually going through either right or left side of the patient, uh, with the tube inside going inside the chest wall. Okay, and that's why it's called thoracotomy. Uh, a thoracotomy uh, tube or chest tube symbol, uh, uh, like way of saying it, is a chest tube. If you see that, again, you have to comment on that, and you can say, my patient is connected to chest tube. So th uh, this uh, actually will cover up the connections, uh, and then we go next after you s comment on all these connections that uh, will be gone through with your patient, you look for a very careful sign that is very important for respiratory patient, for every patient actually, but of course, if the patient, if you are examining respiratory status and respiratory system, the uh, respiratory distress signs are very important to look at. The signs are uh, three main signs that you have to look at, the tachypnea, what we call, uh, and then use of accessory muscles of breathing, and the patient will have difficulty in speech. They, he will have difficulty. We will speak one by one about this. The tachypnea, the patient will have frequent uh, uh, respiratory uh, like uh, better, uh, and he will be breathing in a heavy way. You don't have to count at this stage the respiratory rate. Just look whether he is breathing heavily and frequently, then it means that he is tachypneic. The respiratory rate will come later on when we speak about the vital signs, but just now we are speaking about general appearance. Uh, so if the patient is having respiratory distress, the first sign that you will see is frequent uh, uh, respiratory pattern uh, that will uh, appear every one second or every two seconds, which means the patient uh, is breathing fast. Uh, the, the, second, the other one, which is again can be picked up by general appearance, is the use of accessory muscles. And the use of accessory muscles here, that the first thing we look at, or the most important, like uh, accessory muscle that, that obviously will be seen uh, uh, with the general appearance will be the sternocleidomastoids. As you know, the sternocleidomastoid muscles, I hope that you can recognize them and remember their position from your anatomy, you can start seeing the sternocleidomastoids uh, contracting with each breath. Uh, and that can be seen in patients who are actually uh, having, having respiratory distress. You'll start to see that, and you can see that the, the uh, sternocleidomastoid will contract with each breath. If you see that, this is a sign, an important sign of use of accessory muscles of breathing. There are other accessory muscles of breathing that cannot be seen early at, with the general appearance. The most important muscles that you will be looking at at this stage uh, as a sign of use of accessory muscles of breathing will be the sternocleidomastoids because these are obvious muscles that can be seen at the neck muscles without a lot of exposure. So if you see that this patient has another sign of respiratory distress, the difficult interrupted speech uh, that will happen due to the respiratory distress will be shown up that the patient cannot breathe fluently. He will have to have interrupted uh, uh, like uh, sentences. He cannot speak l like long sentences uh, and he will have to interrupt at one word or two words. Uh, say if you ask him about his name, and his name is Muhammad Saeed uh, uh, Ahmed, and you ask him what is your name, normal people will say my name is Muhammad Saeed Ahmed, without stopping. However, pe uh, patients with respiratory distress, they will have to stop at each word. So he'll say Muhammad, and then he take a breath, Saeed Ahmed. So he will have interrupted speech trying to take a breath between each word. Uh, and this is another sign, very important sign of respiratory distress. Now if you see these signs, it also will help you to say 
whether your patient is in mild respiratory distress, moderate respiratory distress, or severe respiratory distress. Because if it is mild respiratory distress, he will show only one sign, which is tachypnea. If it is moderate, he will show, he, he will show tachypnea and use of accessory muscles. However, if he shows all the signs, he or she shows all the signs of tachypnea, uh, the use of accessory muscles, and also he is having difficulty speech, then this indicates the degree of respiratory distress is more severe. And it is important really to know whether it's a mild respiratory distress, moderate respiratory distress, or severe respiratory distress, depending on how many signs that you have discovered in your patients. So this, uh, this uh, actually uh, uh, introduction to the patient by just looking at your uh, patient from a distance, general appearance, and you will look at, I will repeat again, you look at your patient is sick or ill, his body built, and signs of respiratory distress. These are the most important basic uh, like signs that will be seen by general appearance and you should look at them and comment on them as basics of general appearance. There are other signs you can have in the general appearance, however, at your level as a medical student, these are the most important that you should stress on.